Hello, I'm Lindsay Gustin. Welcome to the show. Today we are pairing food and wine with Aaron McLeod, executive chef at Vintage Restaurant Group. Welcome to the show, Aaron. Well, thank you. Thanks for having us. We've brought uh, Andrew Stover, uh, sommelier of Say and Oya restaurants in the district. Um, he's going to be uh, talking through a few different wines, and actually five, six wines. Wow. Um, and uh, then yeah. we're going to cook a little dish with each one. Wow. We'll start with okay. the first wine, Andrew. Yeah, well, today um, I brought a number of wines. We have wines from uh, five different states. Uh -huh. uh, one of my specialties is promoting wines from around the United States and some from some unusual places. Yes. And uh, so one of my favorites, and always a good aperitif, would be sparkling wine, right? Yes. So I brought the Hula Omaui sparkling pineapple wine from Maui, Hawaii. Wow, that yeah. sounds good. So let's, uh, let's yes. open this baby up and uh, mm. have some pineapple. So this, is a, this is a great uh, patio wine. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, we're thankfully coming up into the yeah. spring. Yeah. Um, and uh, we serve it at uh, all three of our restaurants, Finish oh, 50, mm -hmm. uh, Finish 51, and our new restaurant, not yet, because mm -hmm. we haven't had patio season yet at <laughs> Catch 52. <laughs> we just opened our, our seafood restaurant, Catch 52, mm. uh, in South Ride, and we'll definitely be, be serving that. So how's that going? Uh, it's going great. Good. It's going great. So we're going to be pairing mm -hmm. this. Um, we're going to kind of mimic uh, a Hawaiian pizza. Oh, so all right. Pineapple and ham. Pineapple and ham, right? Sounds so like fun. My yeah. favorite. Okay. And, then, <laughs> and then we have, uh, in uh -huh. this little guy here, we have a uh, celery root espuma. So, um, this, excuse me, Lindsay, this, this big guy here, mm. um, we've uh, created a little puree out of it and then made a Wow, this foam. is interesting looking. <laughs> yeah. And then we have a little foam uh, that we'll use sort of like backwards chips and dip. So, oh, I see. Um, I like this. So we have a little root vegetable mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the little bit of ham mixed all, all together and uh, should go quite well with the wine. Well, pineapple. Let's try it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a really interesting wine. It's made out of 100% Maui gold pineapples. Is it? From the island of Ma Maui. Mm -hmm. And it's created in what's considered the traditional sparkling wine method that is used in champagne. It's fermented in the bottle. It's considered brut, which means not sweet. So those, those of you that might think of pineapples as really sweet, they're yes. not, not so. Mm -hmm. uh, this is done as a dry aperitif wine and a perfect pairing to uh, something like that we have in front of us. Mm -hmm. Ham and bubbles and, and yeah. salty. Right. Tasty. Yep. Mm -hmm. salty, salty, crunchy. Right. All right, so let's mm. see what we think. Well, it tastes good. Mm. Well, let's try this. Mm, mm. Very good. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. This is the first time we tried this, believe it or no. not. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So what else will you be doing on the show today? Well, <clears throat> um, next we'll be wow. doing two different fish courses. Mm -hmm. um, then after that, we'll be do doing two different uh, game courses. And then uh, bacon and chocolate. To oh, so great. That all sounds we'll be, good. We'll be right back. Wait till you see the wines we put with it. Ah, oh, yeah. Cheers. I'll see you in the kitchen. We're in the kitchen now with our executive chef, Aaron McLeod, and Andrew. So uh, what do we have first, Aaron? Okay, so we're going to do uh, a little crudo, uh, so a raw uh, fish preparation of one of my favorite fish, um, uh, hamachi, also mm. known as yellowtail. Um, nice fatty fish. Um, we're going to pair it with a lot of different uh, ingredients that are going to pair, I, I hope anyway, really well with um, the shindig rosé. Um, right. So mm. let's, let's try it. Let, let's, Let's do an experiment. Andrew, okay, hey, give me your hand. Try okay. this. So you got to tell us what so, we got. So <laughs> that's a longan. So a uh, little bit of pickled onion here. So we're going to kind of build the dish in Andrew's hand. So longans oh. are a fruit that kind of tastes like lychee. Kind of like lychee. A um, mm. little bit of pickled fennel, little okay. pickled onion. So try all those together. Just, just let's smell it. And this is what smell that all this together. Is what the chef and I do when we're trying to figure out the flavors <laughs> it's, it's, of the dish. I mean, it's the worst job in the world. Oh yeah, yeah you know, the flavor of the dish. This is this is my plate um, <laughs> to kind of figure out what's what's going to go what's going to go best with uh, this preparation mm -hmm. because hamachi hamachi. Now try this. Smell well, that. I smell that. Yeah. Right. Now try. That. Okay, mm -hmm. so you've got acid from the pickling. Sure. Mm -hmm. Fennel is kind of got an anise um, aroma, and then you got a really interesting fruit flavor, kind of like lychee rose petals from the, the long and berries. Um, and then what, how, what else is on this? There's and a, then what we'll do is we'll, we'll, broth, the, right? well, the hamachi itself is such a, it's one of my favorite fish. You like and, it? Oh, mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. fantastic. Also known as yellowtail. Very fatty, um, just 
really, really uh, beautiful fish, and you don't want to mess it up by cooking it. Just oh, nice, right. raw, yep. slice, Absolutely. Um, and then we're going to finish the whole thing off with uh, a little uh, uh, guava broth oh, that is just so aromatic um, and, and wonderful. Yeah, that so it just like guava. It, it's, mm. it, it mm. smells like almost like the rosé. So mm -hmm. um, let me build this dish here. Andrew can kind of talk about more of the flavors as I do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're looking at a raw fish like this, I mean, certainly it has, it's more about the texture. Is it? Um, certainly, because you've got all these other flavors that are being incorporated. We've got the lychee-like flavors from the longinberries. We've got the pickled onions, the pickled fennel. That mm -hmm. adds acidity. Uh, then we also have well, the kumquats that are going to be put on top. That adds another little bit of fruitiness. But really, what kind of struck me with struck me with this dish was the guava broth, because it's so aromatic and so fruity, Very and nice. so taking all that into consideration, the kind of wine that we want to look look for is going to be fruity, but also it's sort of so sort of a higher it, higher in acidity, so that it matches the acidity of the items that have been pickled. Wow, that so is beautiful. We have this amazing mm. pink Pinot Grigio mm -hmm. that we're going to pair with it from Oregon. Pinot Grigio is a grape that has a little bit of color to the skins. They're not white skin, they're not purple skin, they're kind of in between. So uh, this winemaker makes a pink wine out of it and it literally smells like guava. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, so we, we have, we're going to get kind of a shot on that, that dish there. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll finish it with a little bit of a guava oh, wow. broth there. there. That is beautiful. And there's your dish. And, and funny enough, <laughs> look. The wine and the guava all are almost the same color. <laughs> yeah, I see that. I so, like yeah, that. Give, give that a whiff there. And, and mm, I like that. And Let's see the wine. You want to try that? Oh, yes. Mm. All right. And we'll be right back. Mm, tastes good. <laughs> the recipes that we're making on today's show are available on my website. That's www.chefsbeat.org. Now, Aaron is cooking up some fish here. And I promise I'll send you the recipes this time. All good. All right. So we're going to do a um, little snapper, roasted snapper dish mm -hmm. um, with a, a Arizona Stronghold from a, a famous wine guy. Right? Yeah. This is our Arizona Stronghold white blend. It's a blend of Chardonnay, Riesling, Pinot Gris, Malvasia Bianco. It's just a kind of a, uh, a conundrum of different grapes. And uh, this is co-produced by Maynard James Keenan, who is the lead singer of the rock group Tool. Oh, right. And it's a full-bodied, aromatic, very smooth white wine. And tends to go very well with fattier fish. I like it with sea bass. It's great with snapper, which we're about to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, we've decided it's very good with beets as well. Oh, good. <laughs> I think it's great. You know, beets, you know, this time of year, it, it's, it's a difficult, uh, or challenging, I should say, time of year yeah. uh, to pair certain things. Mm. Uh, we're, we're at the end of winter. Uh, we're not quite into spring. So uh, got root vegetables. beets there. They look good. Yeah, They're already root, so cooked we, up, right? Right. So we, we have a little, um, little beet puree there. And uh, then we're going to put our, our snapper there, just a nice little wow, roast on it. That uh, looks kept the, good, Aaron. the skin on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, very simple, just just mm. as is. Delish. Mm, and should great. go quite well. Mm -hmm. I like the label on your wine. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's something we haven't seen in a while. Yes. The sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of sunshine in Arizona. And these grapes are grown in southeastern Arizona, which mm -hmm. is a high elevation desert. So it's not as hot as you might think. Mm -hmm. It's actually a great spot for growing grapes. And it'll go great with our fish. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, don't go away. What do we have next, Beets? Aaron? <laughs> Wine, it's great. Uh, next up is going to be um, a pheasant sausage dish. Pheasant oh, sausage. sounds good. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. Aaron, is what you're making now on your menu? Uh, this actually is on the menu at Vintage 50 right now. Mm -hmm. Excuse my tapping. <laughs> uh, so we have a pumpkin risotto. It's a great, um, great winter dish. Pumpkin risotto with uh, a little bit of Vermont pheasant mm -hmm. uh, sausage. Um, and then uh, a little bit of uh, a game berjou, um that we're going to pair with one of Andrew's wines from mm -hmm. Michigan. Yes, right? yes. Both of us are from Michigan. You're a, you're a Midwestern girl yes, too. Yes, huh? I'm All from right. Chicago. I've been Good. to Michigan lots of times. Very Good. beautiful. Have you been state. to Traverse City? Yes, I have. Well, that's actually where this winery is located. Is it? Uh, oh. Good Harbor Vineyards, which is on the Leelanau Peninsula in Traverse City, mm. uh, near the Traverse City. place in the world. Uh, this is the Shindig Red. I actually work on this wine with the winemaker. Oh. It's a Pinot Noir red blend. It's bright. Very fruity, little yeah, earthy, 
and it works really well with uh, game game dishes oh, like pheasant mm -hmm. or if we had duck or wild boar. Great, great pairing. Mm -hmm. So Aaron, Aaron, if we get nervous, oh, I can yeah, see. <laughs> and we, so Aaron, if we come to Vintage Fifty, would you have this available? These wines right now, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of the wines that Andrew's uh, recommending uh, today are are available at Vintage Fifty. Uh, mm -hmm. Some are at Vintage Fifty One. Many are at, Vintage, at Catch Fifty Two. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna uh, get this risotto going. We're gonna kind of finish it. We call it the duck rub at Vintage Fifty. It's, oh, you uh, do? <laughs> we're, we're, so we're pairing it with pheasant right now, but it's uh, a nice. Um, rub of several different um there are actually uh 22 different ingredients holy in, cow in this wow, wow. Right here. That wow. Is interesting. but smell that let me I smell like that mm. oh wow that with the wine <laughs> wow right there are some similarities you want, you want isn't it, that interesting yeah i, I have my wine that. here Yes, I, I think see. one of the, the it's it's it kind of it got a lot of spice. The wine has some spice, right. and it mm -hmm. works. It's kind of heavy on on um, uh, anise, which uh, Andrew's not too fond of. I didn't of, say but that. I'm, I'm, I didn't say that. I'm, I said it's hard to pair with wine. It has <laughs> a liquid flavor, right? Yeah, it, right, yeah. exactly, and um, and also juniper. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of different herbs in there. Um, it, but that's that's one of the sort of predominant uh, mm -hmm. flavors in this dish. So um, we have. The risotto that we're just about finishing up here, and then we're going to finish it. We, I have a lot of butter in there already, but mm -hmm. we're going to finish it with um, a Manchego-style cheese. Mm. Um, it's not exactly Manchego. It's from. Uh, it's called San Andres from Bellwether Farms oh, um, out in California. Rather than uh, finishing it with uh, Parmesan, mm -hmm. I think the. And actually, before we started this segment, Andrew was commenting on. How <laughs> wow! That's a yeah. That's it was, a, it's that's great. A wine I mean, I'm cheese. gonna I'm gonna <laughs> snack on the cheese just by itself and drink some of the wine because a hard cheese like this yes. with a sort of fruity red wine, it just mm. is such a great pairing. Does it go well? I mean, that's a totally another segment, but yeah. Mm. Mm. How is it? Mm. Delicious. Getting there. Mm -hmm. A little more cheese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it. the cheese ice goes well with the risotto. Well, traditionally, you might finish it with. Um, uh, with Ooh. the Parmesan, but I, I think the, the grassiness of a Manchego style, this isn't technically a Manchego, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's from California, but a wonderful cheese that, that we offer at, at Vintage 50 um, all the time. So just about done. So um, we're going to finish it with just a little bit of a pumpkin puree. Oh, wow, that Kinda is nice. Well, that's pumpkin that you pureed up, huh? That's right. Actually, a mm. uh, pumpkin that came from our garden at Vintage 50. Really? That is neat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we have that. We're going to spoon a little bit of that right on the mm -hmm. well, I bet here. that pumpkin, too, gives it a nice flavor, huh? I, I think so. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, some lovely f uh, pheasant sausage. Mm. <coughs> Clean our plate up here. Mm -hmm. And then finally... This so pan has been, putting been worrying you over yes, here. Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to brown some butter mm -hmm. and then quickly just toss some, some Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels leaves. Um, oh, we're, yes. We're you made them last time when you were Did I? Oh, yeah, yes, probably. I remember those. This, yes. this time of year, just a little bit, just a little tiny cook into it. And Brussels sprouts are good. Uh, for the winter, are, yeah. yeah they, they absolutely are. Mm. Um, and then we're just going to finish that it off. That gives some flavor and color. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to finish it with uh, a little bit of uh, a pheasant jus mm. around the plate. Wow. Beautiful. And that's it. That is gorgeous, yeah. So what's in the uh, this, the pheasant uh, so that's Sorry. just, a, it's a stock that we, we take pheasant and, and roast them and, and get a... Uh, Really, really um, heavy-duty sort of game bird uh, flavor out of it. Uh, a lot of vegetables mm -hmm. in there, and then we cook that down. So for it adds to the uh, right. And we cook that dish. down with uh, with um, a wine similar to this for several hours. And, and uh, here I want to show our pumpkin puree. That's mm -hmm. our pumpkin puree. So you make that at the restaurant? Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Boy, so what else can you use this in? This is nice. Oh, anything. I mean, it, it's very similar to what you might uh, start a, a pumpkin pie with. Oh, I see. Or um, mm -hmm. uh, any, any sort of pumpkin-based uh, ingredient. Great. So, well, let's try our wine now, there right? You there you go. <laughs> Cheers. I need to get a little more. I well, it's crazy. a beautiful red color. Yeah, you like that? Yes. It mm -hmm. smells nice and fruity, a little earthy. 
Got a little bit of spice. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Very easy to drink. Yes, nice. Oh, these are some great wines that you brought today. <laughs> so what do we have from Michigan. Next? Michigan. But what a, but what a right. thought, right? There's a couple yeah. decent things from Michigan, <laughs> I, I suppose. Well, you said all your wines are from every state. I work with I work with a lot of wines from all over the U.S. Yes. Mm -hmm. There yeah. are there is a winery in every U.S. state. That is interesting. Yes. <laughs> so next up, we're going to have a, a goose dish, um, oh, I like something that. that not too many restaurants around here uh, are are fortunate enough to offer. So we have mm -hmm. a, a goose dish that we're going to pair with uh, another very interesting wine. Fourteen different grapes go into the next wine. Wow. Are we right back? Wait, our chef That's okay. Okay, Aaron, so what do we have now? So, we're going to do a goose dish. Which, oh, I uh, like goose. That you don't find very often mm -hmm. anymore. Um, I love goose. It, it's something that, um, as a diner, you're not going to see in very many restaurants around here. Mm -hmm. So, we've done it in two different ways. Uh, we have the, the breast uh, here on, on the cutting board that I'm going to slice, and then we've braised the leg and thigh, and then we did um, sort of a, we, I was thinking kind of classic uh, English Christmas, you know, so we oh, did a, yes. a bread pudding with... Um, that looks with, nice there, yeah. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we did a bread pudding with chestnuts, um, and then we have some wonderful uh, porcini mushrooms. Oh, we can yeah, get a, those are a good. Shot. I, these are, there yeah. you go. Mm. Beautiful porcinis. That's an A porcini, one of the uh, prize ingredients um, in, in the world uh, this time of year. And I think go really well with, with this wine. And this here is our bread pudding here you have here. Huh? Right. Mm, boy, that looks good. So, Andrew, smell that. Smell your wine. Wow. Right? I mean, it That's amazing. Off. There's so yes. many commonalities. I see so that. So, the wine that we've decided to pair with this, mm -hmm. uh, Goose is sort of similar to duck, but it's a little more robust. Uh, so I picked a wine from Southern Oregon. It's a wine called 14 Vines. It's from a small winery called Giraday. It's in the Umpqua Valley. And it's a blend of 14 different grapes. Pinot Noir, Syrah, Merlot, Little Cabernet, Little Syrah, Little mm. Viognier, and a little, several other varietals of grapes that the winemaker says are a secret family recipe. But that doesn't matter. Yes. The, what <laughs> matters is that it's a very bright, very juicy red wine with a lot of earthy smokiness that pairs really well with, with fatty goose and also has mushroomy aromas to go with the porcini mushrooms mm -hmm. and also with the, the bread pudding with the chestnuts. Oh, it's I kind see of that. Earthy yeah, that would nutty. be good, yes. Just such a really amazing wine for such a complex dish. Mm -hmm. So just, I mean, can you smell all the... I can. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? You put your seasoning in there. You're gonna, I'm going to oh, deep glaze with this wine. With the wine. I like to drink just wine when I'm bit. cooking. Sometimes... Yeah. Sometimes I put it in the food. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, once in a blue moon. But, yeah. I mean, just smell all that. Ah, nice aroma. I, yeah. I, I think that's really mm -hmm. incredible. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slice the goose. Delish. Mm -hmm. uh, just a little bit of this. Mm -hmm. And we'll put this over here with the rest of the dish. Oh, yeah, that's and, pretty. And uh, a couple of these porcinis that we've deglazed with the wine that's going to go with it. I mean, look mm. at those. Those are, those are gorgeous. It's a beautiful presentation. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank the food. I mean, it, it, it did it all, you know. It, it's very, very, uh, very simple. Um, just let the food kind of speak for itself. And then we've made a, a jus with the porcinis um, that they'll just pair really well mm. with the wine. You always want to make sure that, that the, the sauce itself um, is pairing really well with the wine. So this is very heavy. You want, you want to give this a try? Yes. It won't kill you. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, very yeah. heavy on, on the it mushroom. Is. And, mm -hmm. and you, know, I can you, you can see that. all of the, um, mm -hmm. all the complexity of the wine uh, that, that comes out um, uh, in, in the sauce as well. Well, let's try our wine then. All right, let's try it. This is from Oregon. Oregon, Southern Oregon. So it's three hours south of Portland. Everybody thinks of wine and they think of Willamette Valley in Oregon. Yes. That's where Pinot Noir is famous, uh, Pinot Gris and Riesling. But this is a totally different place. Mm. It's three hours south of Portland. It's close to Crater Lake National Park. Oh, I little like warmer, that. It's a beautiful little, area. Little, little, little mm -hmm. warmer, a little drier down there. So they're growing some grapes that are a little more robust, like Merlot and Syrah. Yeah. So um, it's, it's just such a really amazing earthy, smoky wine to go with, with such our a meal, gamey, yeah. gamey, mushroomy dish. 
So mm, next up, we're going we're gonna to try something uh, that not too many viewers might uh, mm. be, be accustomed to, uh, chocolate and, and bacon. Oh, it sounds good. Uh, it was my recommendation. It, yeah, <laughs> I, I got to say that the wine guy chose this one. He said, give me some chocolate and bacon. I want chocolate and bacon because that's my new thing. Is so it? we're, we're yeah. going to try that uh, with another fantastic wine. So we'll be in the dining area. Cheers. Mm. <sighs> I had to get back to finish. Catch 52. We're in the dining area now, and Aaron, tell us about the dessert you made for us today. So we've done something a little not... Not, not your normal sort of pairing, uh, chocolate mm -hmm. and bacon. Um, mm. If you think about it logically, uh, it actually makes a lot of sense. You have something that is so luscious on the savory side. Mm -hmm. uh, bacon. I mean, yes. who doesn't like bacon? I, I, it's one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. Uh, we actually make the bacon um, at, uh, at the restaurant I do. Um, from uh, Ayrshire Farm uh, pork bellies. So we get the bellies uh, from Ayrshire, which is an incredible uh, organic farm in Upperville, Virginia. Um, and we cure them um, for quite a while, smoke them. Um, so it's, it's the vintage 50 bacon. Any bacon you get at the restaurant um, is, is done uh, as such. And then we've made truffles, black, wow. uh, or, mm. uh, uh, dark chocolate truffles um, with, uh, with that bacon. And with this wine, you have savory, you have sweet, you have salty, you have fatty, you have everything mm. that makes uh, your palate just go, mm. all right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm salivating over here. I love chocolate. What? I love bacon. Yeah. So give, yeah. give it a try. Let's yeah. taste it first, and yeah. then we'll talk Let, about the wine. Let's try it beforehand. Mmm. Mm. Wow, that is good. Oh, the bacon. Mmm. Like mm. very so subtle. The viewers, at, viewers at home mm. might think, oh, bacon. Eh. Mm, no, no. No. Oh, the bacon subtle. is 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 kind of mm. later. It. It, the the fattiness of the bacon just kind of yeah. brings it all together. Oh, I, I have another bite. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you know, it's very subtle, and here's the thing about pairing wine with chocolate. We have a pretty high content of cacao mm -hmm. with this particular chocolate, right? Cacao is a little on the bitter side, but this is also a really big and luscious chocolate. Mm. That, you know, the truffles have a sort of a soft inner center, yeah. uh, so you get a really fatty, kind of luscious center. So. The best thing to do is to find a big, full-bodied red wine. And that's what we have here. That's what we have. That not only has big, full, almost chocolatey flavors, earthy, leathery bacon flavors, since we have bacon in the chocolate, but also something that has a nice, fresh acidity to it. And so we have chosen Syrah, which is, of course, the French grape from the Rhone Valley. But uh, with a twist, we have the Sawtooth Syrah from the Snake River Valley of Idaho. Mm. Idaho, known That's for its label. majestic mountains, mm. the Snake River with its fly fishing. And this is a fantastic pairing to dark well, chocolate let's try it now. with bacon. And a wine from Idaho. Yes. Who would have thunk it, right? Yeah, right. right? It was one of the, the, the selling points on this. A great wine from Idaho. Mm. We're doing so. bacon, Idaho Syrah. So I'll go away, we'll be back, and we'll review what we made today. Mm. So we're going to review what we made today, Aaron. Okay, so we started with the, the sparkling wine mm -hmm. um, before this even, uh, with the, the chips and dip backwards. Um, and then we've moved on to the shindig rosé um, with the hamachi crudo, uh, a little bit of pickled fennel, some pickled onions, um, and the longans. Um, and then, of course, the... Uh, Beautiful shindig Pinot Grigio Rosé from <laughs> Willamette Valley, Oregon, which is yeah. a perfect match. And then there, you, there you go. And then we're over here. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved on to Andrew. The Arizona Stronghold Tazi White Blend from southeastern Arizona, paired mm -hmm. with? Uh, with some roasted uh, snapper and Michigan beets. And next? And next, we moved back to Andrew. The uh, Shindig Pinot Noir Blend from Michigan with the... Vermont Pheasant and a little pumpkin risotto. And then on to my favorite. Uh, mm, <laughs> 14 <laughs> Vines Oregon Red Blend from Southern Oregon paired with... Uh, goose two different ways. We have the roasted breast, uh, the braised leg and thigh, um, a little bread pudding the way my grandmother made it with mm. uh, some mm. chestnuts and dried fruit, porcini mushrooms. It just 
fantastic flavors all, all put together. And then finally, we our moved. Our dessert. Yeah, our chocolate. Our dessert. <sighs> mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sawtooth. <laughs> Snake River Valley, Idaho, sea raw paired with? With uh, Ayrshire Farm pork bellies that uh, at Vintage 50 we turn into bacon. Um, and then we made uh, chocolate truffles with that bacon. And great way to finish a day. Um, and I'm going to put up the information a... now so we know right, how good. to get there. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's Vintage 50 Restaurant. 50, how do you pronounce it? Catoctin. Catoctin, a circle. Leesburg, Virginia. One of our three restaurants. 703-777-2169. There's your website. Vintage Restaurant Group, uh, which will include Vintage 51 and Catch 52. And then don't forget uh, Andrew Sue Restaurants, Say, and Oya in, um, DC. in DC. In DC. And right. I would put up my website because these recipes are available on my website at chefsrecipes.org. So I want to thank you both for coming on. The thank show. you. Thank you. It's been All fantastic. Right. Cheers. 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 Remember, until next time, good eating.